In his elbow muscle, the extensor carbi radialis brevis, ECRB. The muscle that is involved in the condition of tennis elbow is the extensor carbi radialis brevis. The name suggests it is a small muscle. However, this muscle is an important muscle and it is involved in multiple unique conditions. This muscle originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, they call it the common extensor tendon. The extensor carbi dialis brevis is inserted into the base of the dorsal aspect of the third metacarbal. The extensor carbi dialis longus is inserted into the base of the second metacarbal bone. The ECRB is innervated by the radian nerve. The function of the muscle is to extend and abduct the hand at the wrist joint. The extensor carbaridialis brevis is located in the second dorsal compartment on the radial side of the lister's tubercle. There are several conditions associated with the extensor carbaridialis brevis. Number one, tennis elbow. Tennis elbow is called lateral epicondylitis. It's an overuse injury that causes inflammation, tendinosis, and lateral elbow pain at the origin of the extensor carbaridialis brevis tendon. It affects about 50% of all tennis players, and it is the most common cause of elbow symptoms in patients that complain of elbow pain. Tennis elbow involved extensor carbaridialis brevis tendon origin. The pathology of the extensor carbaridialis brevis tendon in tennis elbow shows disorganized collagen, vascular hyperplasia, and fibroblast hypertrophy. The condition usually starts by micro tears of the origin of the extensor carbaridialis brevis and that's precipitated and aggravated by repetitive wrist extension and forearm pronation. About 5% may have associated the radial tunnel syndrome. In tennis elbow, the patient will complain of point tenderness around the lateral epicondyle. In radial tunnel syndrome, the point of tenderness will be about 3 to 4 cm distal and anterior to the lateral epicondyle, and that should be in the differential diagnosis of tennis elbow. Treatment of tennis elbow, usually activity modification, anti-inflammatory medication, physiotherapy, especially eccentric exercises, injection, steroid injection, PRP may be used, ultrasound guidance may be helpful, and surgery. Surgery is the last resort, and the surgery entails release and debridement of the extensor carbaridialis brevis origin. Another entity the muscle is involved with is called intersection syndrome. Intersection syndrome is inflammation at the crossing of the first dorsal compartment and the second dorsal compartment that contains extensor carbaridialis brevis. It occurs from repetitive wrist extension. The tenderness on the dorsal radial aspect of the forearm approximately 5 cm proximal to the wrist joint, and it is the area of inflammation of the extensor carbaridialis longus, extensor carbaridialis brevis, at the intersect with the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. The condition is usually treated by rest, splinting, steroid injection, and rarely by surgery. Number three, the extensor carbaridialis brevis muscle is important in dorsal approach to the radius. 
The Thompson dozer approach to the proximal radius may be used for exposure of the posterior aspect of the radial shaft. Incision is made in between the two muscles of the extensor carboradialis brevis and the extensor digitorum. Number 4. In tennis elbow surgery, excessive release of the extensor carboradialis brevis tendon, which is the origin, during tennis elbow surgery can cause injury to the unhumeral ligament and can cause posterolateral elbow instability. Please note the proximity of the origin of the extensor carboridialis pervis tendon to the unhumeral collateral ligament. The ligament is close to the tendon and can be injured due to excessive release of the origin of the extensor carboridialis pervis. Number five, tendon transfer in high radial nerve palsy. In high radial nerve palsy, injury to the radial nerve results in wrist drop due to paralysis of the wrist extensors. The pronator teres transfer to the extensor carboridialis brevis is a very popular tendon transfer in high radial nerve palsy and it is used to restore wrist extension. So high radial nerve palsy transfer of the pronator teres to the extensor carboridialis brevis to restore wrist extension. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.